Even in our business today, if you don't have good knowledge of the product you're selling, it's very difficult. your customer will not have respect for you. True. You must know your product, your product well. well. Product knowledge is very important. True. What is very important during those days from day one, whether you were an employee or you were in partnership or you are starting your own venture from day one. Punctuality, you said, Bawa, come here at 10 o'clock. True. In my business, credibility. Mm. Credibility for time, credibility for pun punctuality. For punctuality, credibility for money. If I owe you money, I don't have to hide behind True. junior level stuff. He's in a meeting, he's out of the country. Good evening and welcome to the Late Night Business. My name is Ian Dennis and I'm quite excited about the show that you have up, lined up today. It's an interesting show where we're going to be recounting history, Kenya's history, not only uh, through business, but through the eyes of my guests who I have today, who's also a member of the Capital Club. One thing I always like to let you know that we are filming this particular show at the Capital Club, the place as an entrepreneur or someone in the corporate world you need to be because it's right here at the Capital Club that you get to network with the who's who in the corporate world here in Kenya but also internationally. Through the Capital Club you can get access to different clubs around the country or rather around different particular continents. If you're in Asia, if you're in America, if you're part of the Capital Club you can actually get access there. And also quite interestingly today the guest that I have is also a member of the Capital Club and has managed to set up different his business across different different continents. I'm speaking about Govindra Bawa. Hope I got it right. Govinda. Govinda Singh Bawa. Go Govinda Singh Bawa. Hope <laughs> nice to see you. Pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much for welcoming me to this show. And uh, I feel very fortunate today that uh, out of the many members here who are very successful and very intelligent, I am one of the, those chosen few. <laughs> and I'm also grateful to Capital Club to have forwarded my name and uh, to the GM, to my membership manager. I'm grateful. And also, I think there's a very good gift you have given me yes. because my birthday is on the 27th this Saturday. And, and coincidentally, and mentioning about that, <laughs> mine is on the 25th tomorrow. <laughs> so, I need to do a fixed birthday. So, so, what a gift, what a gift. It's uh, quite uh, interesting. Uh, uh, that my 50 years uh, behind me from where I started. Yes. Uh, which is not a very good beginning, yeah. both as a child, college. It was a, it was a very long and slow walk. It was a very long and slow walk. I would not say a journey, but it was a very slow walk. Mm -hmm. How old are you turning? I'll be turning 67. Wow. I'm a senior citizen. <laughs> <laughs> and just as you start today, because you've lived for 67 years, uh, what I, today, what exactly are you most grateful for, looking back? To share my experience, to share my stories, what I went through in my, in my life. Mm -hmm. I don't want the sad part of it, but I want the good part of it. Mm -hmm. But it can be an inspiration for many. Because every time I meet people, they want to have a head start. Yes. But even if you don't have a head start, you're not born with a silver spoon in your mouth, you can still make it. And okay. I'm an example. Interesting. So let's just go through your story. You're the founder and the CEO of Magic Chemicals. And before we just go, get into your entrepreneurial journey, you've mentioned that you're not born with a silver spoon. You were born in the previously Bama, now Myanmar. Just take me through your earlier years. How exactly were your earlier years before coming to Kenya? Coming to Kenya was a, was quite way ahead. When I was like 24 years and few months, I just finished my master's, uh, aspiring to go to states like anybody from any developing country. Yes, everyone. Uh, all looking of us. at all the Ivy League schools, <laughs> yes. and some of our professors who have already been there had their PhDs from there. Mm -hmm. They were quite intimidating. They were our idols, and we thought that uh, why not? If give a shot, yeah. if you can. And uh, in the process. Uh, we all tried. Some of us were lucky who got there, some are not lucky. Because it is not just your intelligence, but also it's the finance part comes in. Everybody does not get a scholarship. True. It's very competitive. Yeah. But before we start that part of it, let me go back yes, to Myanmar back and the to story. Myanmar, yes. uh, our family started from the Indian subcontinent, the part of Pakistan, which was part of India. And my great grandfather and his brother, both of them moved to Myanmar to look for a living starting a small shop, a small dukkha, like many Indian Asians came from India, you call Asians, now we call them Indians, yes. Asian phrase has been wiped out now, we all call them Indians. Mm -hmm. So like they came here many, many years back and started small dukkhas, so same. Then my grandfather was born there and uh, 
with his other sisters and all that family started. Then my father was born there, he had four kids. My father was the first born and my grandfather was just high school, but he spoke very good English and uh, he even drove a car, an Opel French car at that time, okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> this is between the First World War and the Second World War. That's so nevertheless, yes. Then my father was a first born and he was being groomed with the business. And uh, my grandfather, just before the Second World War, uh, he was quite a name in the district. He was a big distributor. He also got into hydroplanes and into that kind of agency. He was into shipping, into many things. And my father was his right hand. The other brothers, the siblings were just following him. Then the threat of the Second World War came in. And since it was a British colony also, so they were given eviction orders because they were expecting the invasion mm -hmm. of Japan from that part of the country. Mm -hmm. So it borders with India and through with the convoys, all these people, including my family, my grandfather, my father and his brothers, they all went. And then they moved to the side of India. After the World War was over, my grandfather settled his three other yeah, sons in India. But being my father, firstborn, was very close to him. He said, go back and start go it back again. To Myanmar. So to go back and again, start the business again, again after the bombardment. True. So he went there. He could not, he could not reach that place was cordoned off. The heavy bombardment there, and so he had to start all over again from scratch. Wow. But he made it again. He was a fighter, I think, and that gene I've also inherited from him. I think sometimes I said, where did this energy and strength come into me? So I said, sometimes so maybe I got it. It's an inherent gene. So nevertheless. Uh, he started again and by 60, 61, he was well established. Oh. Unfortunately, in 62, there was a military coup. Uh -huh. General in, Navin. In Myanmar, yes. In Myanmar. Now it's called Myanmar, then Burma. Burma. People know Burma. Many indigenous Kenyans yes. also went there during the war. If you talk to your grandfather and friends, they'll say, yes, <laughs> we have very interesting stories yes. of Myanmar and Burma. <laughs> I did find out because my, gran my yes. grandfather was also part of those. <laughs> True. Yes. I, I met a couple of people and they talk about, uh, about, uh, about it to me. War. They have some stories, very interesting stories. Nevertheless, so he went there, start again. Then in 62, there was a military coup. The chief of the army staff, General Nevin, he took over power from Utah, mm -hmm. who was also United Nations Secretary General. Yes. And then, after taking power, yes. it was announced that Burma is nationalized. Nothing belongs to, mm -hmm. to Burma. you citizens. Everything yes. belongs to the government of Burma. Yes. The government. And 60 head of the Indian and Chinese families who control the economy of the country, mm -hmm. they were they were locked up under unaccounted wealth and property. Yes. And Everything was taken back. They had to, they were, we didn't know where they were and all. Mm -hmm. uh, these stories were given to me later. Yes. I was six years old. Uh -huh. And at that time, we were on this side of India. We would come over uh, across India where my grandfather had set up a business and all with my other uncles. And fortunately, we were not there at that part. It was sometime like June or July, summertime could be. I don't remember exactly. But uh, later, we had uh, my, later, the story was given to us that my grandfather could find out that yes, he's okay, he's alive. Mm -hmm. And then, Eventually, he was released. Again, he was, even now, I've been to Myanmar in 2006 to show my wife and my son where we were and all oh. that. We had taken a tour. When my yes. son graduated from high school, I said, this is your gift, let's go to Myanmar. So he was also doing some internship in Malaysia and all that. I said, you fly from Malaysia and you connect with us in Yangon, which is the capital. And my wife and me, my wife would come to Thailand, we'll switch planes from there right. and we all connect. We'll connect. So just from hearing the rich history that you have as a family from your grandfather to your father whereby there's a lot of entrepreneurial genes within the family, what are some of the elements that were actually or that you learned out of you from your grandfather and your father that actually led you to be where you are today? What would you say were some of the biggest lessons that you learned from your grandfather and your father? Yes, if you say and you bring my grandfather in, I have to pay a lot of respect. Because I lost my mother at a very young age. Mm -hmm. I was four years old. I don't even remember her face. So my grandfather and my grandmother took three of us and raised us. Oh. While my father was going through the severe time in Myanmar. And my grandfather with his youngest son ran a very important distributorship in that state. Mm -hmm. For Phillips Radio, Britannia Best. Yeah, like seven of those dictatorships. And uh, the lesson I learned, and I still remember from a young days when I was like eight years, nine years, after school, we would always come and help in the shop. And uh, that he was a very disciplined man, very punctual. 
8 o'clock if the shop has to open, it opens at 8. And he was very calculative, he is more of an accountant. Every single penny matters to him. Every single penny matters to him. Then gene from his blood has also flown into me. I think every penny matters to me. There was a, a bit of accountancy and I still remember how calculative he was. He was very disciplined with time. Everything to be done, even his meals, breakfast, lunch, you know, it was all at time. He's very meticulous. And, and very meticulous and what I remember is his tea time was exactly at four and he would like the English way. Maybe because it was a British colony, colony. he had friends and he got that. His milk and tea has to be separate and he would put hot water in the kettle and then uh, stir it so that the temperature of the kettle is brought uh, brought up and then he'll put uh, throw that water then he'll put his two spoons of tea leaves and then he'll put his hot water he'll put a tea cozy on top of it to brew and then after that he'll stir it with spoon and let it settle again with a lot of passion he'll pour it in his cup then he has hot milk on the side to pour it then he'll mix it slowly and he'll also slurp you know when he's sipping his tea yeah. and recently I watched a clip about the Japanese they say when you slurp that means you're really enjoying it here. Uh, so but it's regarded as bad manners when we are the table I and we are slurping. <laughs> so I that's what I remember culture. about him, yes. <laughs> about few things. But I think that was uh, quite uh, something which I still carry in me and I don't slurp, but okay. <laughs> Sometimes I do that and my wife, my wife complains. Like bud <laughs> my wife complains, I yes. said, okay, let me enjoy it. Yeah. Nevertheless, okay. Regarding my father, I think since he was the first born and my grandfather was a rich man, he inherited a lot from him and he was too spoiled. He did the business with him, but it was very good. True. Oh, because grandfather done most of the business. Yes. Everything is set up, you know. You walk into a setup business, it's so easy. But when you have to start from scratch. It's different. Which I did. Yes. I'll tell you my story. Yes. How difficult it was. It was a long walk and a slow walk. Yeah. Where I am today. So, for him, he has everything. He would even rent an elephant and with a double barrel. Oh. Westerly Richard's gun. You can rent elephants. Hunting. In India, we you could. Elephants. All right, that's very interesting. You pull, pull logs from the forest. Ah. So you will see that not here. These elephants are different genera. I do, I've just seen it on documentaries. Yes, I didn't you know you see on the document. Yes. And I have a picture one day when you, if you happen to visit me, I'll show you which I treasure it. Yes. That he's sitting on top of an elephant with double barrel gun, and I keep telling my son, that my dad had so much time to close his business. So who was running his business? That would go to the steep forest and. Uh, and hunt, and we also had some skins. I had a cheetah skin at home. I remember from my childhood days when I would go and visit him on and off, and he was in that. that I, I forgot that part of it. After they were released, it was also in the town arrest. Yes. You, know, you cannot move out of that town. Oh. If you have to move out of that town, you have to get a special permission. Until 2006, when I went to visit uh, Mandalay, there's the second largest city, where we were very close to Mandalay, and the Sikh temple there was made was built by my grandfather's brother. He never got married, but my great-grandfather wanted to grab all his money. True. But he said, no, I'm not giving you anything. I'm not married, I have no inheritance, so I'll make a Sikh temple. So okay. he put all his money in Sikh temple, and the Sikh temple was built in 1906. And could wow. you believe where the spirit came from? We were exactly there in 2006. Wow. And there was a plate, a marble plate, yeah. on one of the walls and inside the temple. And then the priest was there, they still do, there are some few Sikh families and they are the ones who told us that we want to go from Manle to Yangon or the town, we have to apply for a permission. It can take up to two to three months to get the help because wow. still the country was, was on the military, military coup. Nevertheless, long story done, but it's come a long way. Down. Obviously again, got the Nobel Prize and all again, it's gone back to Tanshe. Oh. I hope one day uh, he will wake up and he'll say, okay, let me let it go. Because right. when I was in, the, in uh, 2006 with my family in Yangon, uh, we went to Shiragwan Pagoda. Uh, this Shiragwan Pagoda, you can move right. and find out it's all the and all that. There's so much history. There's too much Buddhism. He, yeah. Yeah, we, I'm also a little bit in my daily life, a bit of a Buddhist. Uh. I'll tell you what it is. But uh, at this point, we said, we, we said, no, we must go and offer some prayers in the Pagoda. And we went to Shiragwan. A uh, sick friend of mine who worked for UNICEF, he was there yeah. and he says, don't worry, you come visit me. I was a VIP guest of his, with his diplomatic oh. number plate and all noise and <laughs> all that. Yeah. So we arranged with the head monk and the head monk was very surprised because the little history was given to him and the family was here for generations and they wanted to make some special prayers. Oh. So the head monk of Shidagwan Pagoda made special prayers for us and uh, then we had one on one with the chat, which is a real privilege, just like going and meeting the Pope. Yes, I know the monk is usually. Yeah. He's a head monk of, yes. the, I mean, he's like a Pope of Buddhist religion. So, what he said, like, uh, like 
Dalai Lama says, I believe in Allah. I have hope. He said the same. Yes. We have hope. There's something about the, uh, what's it called, the Asian culture about being nurtured into business. So your dad actually started nurturing you into business quite early. Very early. I and mean, then all the Indian families are like that, which are in business. Even here, if you see in the IGRC, yes. when the school goes, will come to the shop. They, they all the time give a hand. So that's how it started at a very early age. Even the school, they're always buying and selling things. True. I remember whenever I would go to New York uh, to visit my family, and my son would say, can you bring me that hooba booba bubble gums? And I would, out of love and care, I said, you know, yeah, I would buy a lot of them. And then what he do? What he did, what he started selling to kids in the slums. And when my wife would open the bag, the school bag to see the homework, what we have to do every day, there's a worksheet, we have to do the homework with the kid. She saw a lot of singles, the dollar singles, and he started selling those the booba booba gum oh. for a dollar. <laughs> so it's just it's just in what's it called? Just it part is, of the Indian culture. It's just part of the Indian culture. Yeah. I mean, it starts at a very early age. You know, all the time buying, selling, buying, selling, that kind of conversation, and you all the time with the children of uh, business people and what else are they talking? They all the time talking this business. Business. Anyway, so that was a part of it. So nevertheless. Uh, he, I also started helping him at a very young age, 12, 13, 14, 15, and he had to do everything possible to make a living. And uh, from there, uh, but one thing good the Indian government did for some of these families which had uh, crossed the border or they had fled from that country and settled on the eastern part of India and that border was to give a piece of land and give some business loan, uh, reserve some seats for education in medicine, in pharmacy, engineering, uh, pure sciences. Since I was helping my father, I could not find those opportunities for not there in that town, in that city. So I could just go to the college and do my general degree. The best you could do was uh, apply for the honors program. Oh, the right. honors program there is first you do high school up to grade 10, and yes. you go to your pre university, then you do three years of degree. Oh, right. And when you are applying from pre university, you are screened out already from high school, whether you are going into sciences or you are going to liberal arts. Oh, so, so the system was certainly different. Yeah, from high school, you already yeah. uh, screened. Oh. So in pre university, you have to do very well in the subject you want to take up on. So if you are selected for the honors program like the physics, chemistry, botany, biology, mathematics, you have four to five hours of extra work afternoon. Those kids who have not been taken the honors program, they will join the college in the morning uh, at 8 and then finish at 12.30. Oh. The honors program will start from 12.30. So you have four to five hours of extra work all through the three years you are there in the honors program. So I was good in chemistry in my pre university. So you have to have 70 plus. It's a cutthroat competition in India. Interesting. It's not from today. Yeah. All the no, time it was back, back in the day. I think yeah, the system was slightly this was, different. Uh, this was 72. I'm, uh, wow. I, I finished my pre-university 72, high school 71, and 72 to 75 I did my BSc honors, and in 72, uh, 73 I was accepted in the honors program, 75 finished, and then I did you don't have opportunity to do master's program, so you have to go to another state. Wow. So again, because I was a refugee and uh, the government had been kind and nice to the refugee children that there are places you can go and you'll be accepted. So there were a lot of opportunities and then I went to a place called Ranchi, which is in Bihar State, which was also some of the capital oh. of the colonies. It's yes. very close to Calcutta, where East India Company, the British has started from. Yes. Yeah. So uh, down south, this Ranchi was the summer capital for the British. And, oh, yes. uh, uh, I was in, uh, in Ranchi and very nice educational place. One of my refugees from Bolson was in the same right. like me and he, he had joined the engineering program there. So that's where, go, that's where you go to do chemistry for your master's? For my master's, um, yeah. Just because of time, I know there's a huge history in terms of your background, but I want to just for now fast forward it. So sure. you started up in Myanmar, gave back, gave, came back to India. How did you get yourself to Kenya? What exactly brought you to Kenya and how exactly was the experience? And just in a Actually, I had very little knowledge about Kenya. All I read in my geography books was Kenya is a game sanctuary. Yes. At one time, I read that the president of Yugoslavia, Mr. Tito, President Tito came here for hunting. Yes. Because the hunting ground also when hunting was not banned. Mm -hmm. And I also remember 78, I think, former president Jomo Kriyata passed away, was also a Yes. So that's what I knew only about Kenya, nothing much. And in my university, in my college, there was the central part of India. Yes. I did not interact with any African students there. Ah. But uh, in other universities, they were there all the time. They come there, yeah. programs and all, but I had not interacted with any Africans. So I was in New Delhi with my just from grandparents for the after they came from Myanmar to build a home there. Yes. And uh, I was there looking for an opportunity, whether it's in Thailand or going to States. Yes. You have to prepare an exam and you have to apply for so many years, a lot of it. Uh -huh. So a whole process you have to go through. And then it's the dream of having graduated to 
also apply for civil service in Germany. We have things like IAS, yes. IFS, IPS, yeah. many state banks, like the, the prestigious banks you have in Kenya. It's a whole process. You can yeah. Yeah. So while job hunting, I one day came across uh, in the paper teaching vacancies in Kenya. Oh. And uh, they were just a married couple as well that I picked up kind of about 9, 9, 30. That time we had that kind the of dialing phone, yes, yes. And I could ask the key from my grandfather because he was keeping him the lock in. And yeah. a lot, so that a lot of abuse will get the baby very bad man lives on it to rent. I said, can I make a call? If you can give me a sure. So uh, I use the phone and pay the call. I said, oh no, are you the first question is, are you married? I said, no, I'm not married. I'm single. I have a job. How do I get married? Uh, I don't know the reasons why they were looking for couples. But then I said, and you were fine. Then I said, well, I may be a boss by years, but you can tell me. So it's up to you. He said, okay, then come and see us on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. So fine, cut the long story, I went and then I got picked up and uh, I had to join sometime in 1980 January. All right. So I had to raise some money, I had my passport because I was already planning to go to state. So but I said, okay, let me, let me go to Kenya, pick up the job, save some money, and then maybe from there I can push. Little did I know that uh, today yes. I'll have an opportunity to be interviewed by you here in Kenya. My goodness, <laughs> quite a rich history. Yeah. And I think uh, wow. we're just about to go on a break, but one of the interesting things is that it's been quite an interesting journey in terms of how exactly Bawa came from India, now he's in Kenya, and then after the break we're going to find out how exactly did the journey of him setting up his business across the different continents came to be. So see you after the break. All right, so Mr. Bauer, just you're taking us through your history, and I think the first half of the show has been extensive in terms of the history and the rich history that you've actually been through. So you came to Kenya as a volunteer teacher. Um, uh, for how long were you a teacher when you came to Kenya, and how, just briefly, how exactly was your experience before now you transitioned into business? I don't regret being a teacher. I was a teacher for about five years. Uh, it was very challenging. We were teaching the British curriculum of A-level. Even today I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. Every day I'm teaching, every moment. Yes. A business, whether they are my clients mm -hmm. or they, it's my staff mm -hmm. or people looking for employment. Every minute the teaching process True. never ends. True. What we now call not teaching, consultancy. So yes. you're like a consultant yes. now. You're all the time consulting people yes. and they're consulting you. So how do I do this? How do I do this? Okay. Yes. So it's good. Uh, I think uh, any time it, it starts in college, university when you start making presentations. You mm -hmm. have to defend your thesis. True. Question answer sessions are there. It's very competitive, cutthroat competition. So when you come to the classroom on the floor and 30 or 50 or 70 students are looking up to you, you should know your subject well. True. And then only they will have respect for you. True. Even in our business today, if you don't have good knowledge of the product you're selling, it's very difficult. your customer will not have respect for you. True. You must know your Product, well. product, well. product knowledge is very important. True. That is how you win customers, with product knowledge. And if you are able to express it, whether you do it in any one language, don't mix languages, whether it's Saveli, whether it's your vernacular. If when I see an Indian, if he's comfortable with the national language, I'll True. switch over to the national language. If he's comfortable with English, I'll speak in English. Okay, so it goes from there. So teaching gave me a very good opportunity, not only to express myself, to learn and get my concepts clear and understand, but to understand the people. I was in a very remote area. Mm -hmm. I was given hardship allowance of 600 shillings on top of my salary. Can you You're in Baringo? Yes, in yes. Baringo, Covernet. Have you ever been there? No. No. Take a chance. Beautiful. <laughs> very scenic. Yes. In fact, the road must be good now, but yes. by the time I left, it was all through Tamak, starting from Marigat, going up uh, to Covernet, going down through Kiro Valley yes. and coming up to Eldoret. Mm. So, it gave me an opportunity to interact at the ground level with the Kenyan indigenous people. In particular, the Tugan people. Yes. Yeah. Their culture. Let me tell you, the th four years I was there. Yes. I never locked my house. Mm -hmm. I just pulled the just door to teach. Yeah. I came back. We were in the school compound. I was uh, given a nice house. Yeah. I came back. Nothing. And even my milk boy he would leave a tree top bottle of milk at my door. And no one will ever touch it. So it, it was an interesting experience but, that you had. Yes. I know it may be very surprising for many that this will not happen in Nairobi, mm -hmm. but where I live now. Yes. People work in a house, I leave it for three months, four months, they have a key to my house to service, to do everything, nothing disappears. Not even a common pin will disappear. Wherever I left it will be there. And one time, 
in my nervous, nervousness yes. when I had to travel, I don't know, at some point a chain which is very precious to me, a gold yeah. chain, which I brought from Myanmar and yes. the monk told me yeah. that wear this, mm -hmm. it'll keep all Everything your miseries else. away. Yeah. So I made a special effort to get, I wear every time and definitely it brought me a lot of good luck. Sure. We all believe in this yeah, kind yeah, of superstitions. Yeah. So I dropped that chain. I didn't realize that I dropped it while I was taking a shower and the hook was loose or yeah, what yeah. happened. Took a plane, got to New York. When I got there after, my wife picked me up, went yeah. home, started talking and then when I went to the bathroom, when I was wiping myself with the towel, I said, where is my chain? Uh, they drop it. Yeah. I got so nervous. I said, oh my God, that's yeah. very precious and yeah. very emotional to me. Kept on thinking, thinking. After some time, my wife is asking, why are you looking so disturbed? Then I told her I dropped my chain somewhere. Mm -hmm. The thing about you'll remember you a lot of jet lag, yeah, yeah. say seven, eight hours and yeah. all that. Anyway, I I cleverly asked my housekeeper. I yeah. said that, uh, did you find any chain in yeah. my house on the console or somewhere? He said, yes, sir. I found it. You dropped it uh, in the bathroom, and I picked it and I put it on your dressing table. Uh, so uh, tell me who will do that? And so I wrote yes. such a long thank you note, and I also rewarded him. Yeah. And the person who looks after the whole estate and all, yeah. I send him a. Wow, interesting. The Sandy, act, a very nice WhatsApp message. I said. The act of kindness. Yeah. So I'll just talk about your teaching experience, but I think I want to just now to fast forward it in terms of why did the thought, because you were a teacher for five years, you came from India, you had to come here and start from again from scratch. At what particular point now did you decide now to set up Magic Chemicals? And why did you decide to set it up initially in New York and in Africa and also in New Delhi? You don't plunge into business just like that. Mm -hmm. It is a process and I've gone through that process. It so happened that Wednesday afternoons was a market day in Kabarnet. Uh -huh. And this is a very interesting story. Even sometimes I wonder, if I would not have met this man, I would not be where I am today. Mm -hmm. So, I didn't have classes. I had a kikapu. I would wear a baseball cap yes. with my bata shoe, North Star, with a hole in it. I'm yes. walking up to town. It's a market day where I can get some little boga, all that. Mm -hmm. While I'm coming back, it's a hot day, dusty yeah, yeah. road, mm -hmm. not tarmac. I see a land cruiser coming down. Mm -hmm. I try to run into the side so that I'm not showered with the dust. Mm -hmm. So this guy was a Mazungu yeah. who slowed down. Mm -hmm. As he came closer to me, he waved at me, he called me, he wanted to give me a ride. I said, yeah. okay, fine, thank you. So after a few minutes, my junction came. I said, you can drop me here, I'm fine. Yeah. So he started asking me a few questions. What do you do while he was driving? Yeah. I said, well, I'm a teacher here. What do you teach here? Is there a school here? I said, yeah, there's a school. You yeah. can't see from the main road. He says, can I have a look at it? I said, yeah, come in. So we drove in and right at the back there was my house. I said, come in if you want to have a glass of water. Later on, I found out who he was and he was surveying the place. Yeah. He was a man, consultant engineer for a company who was going to build that road all the way from Mariga to oh, Barigo, going to Kirio Valley. Yeah, yeah. Bernard Stride, I still remember his name, a German. Yes. So he looked around when I wanted to offer him some water or something drink, he didn't want to drink. I was too below his standard yeah. to drink my water or that. He may get some infection maybe when I think sure. now because he used to have that squash in treetop yeah, yeah. bottle, he put a little bit. Anyway, so he asked me, are you here with your family? I yeah. said, no, but my sister works with me. I said, okay, what, do you, what does she do? I said, she teaches home science also, very surprised. Then after a few minutes, I don't know what went through his mind or his heart. He said, you have a pen and a paper? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah. I gave him one and he started writing for a few minutes. He gave it to me. He mm -hmm. says, write a letter to this man in Nairobi. He's always looking for chemistry people. Ah. And um, he will give you a good opening. Mm -hmm. I said, thank you very much. You're very kind. So he left. On the weekend, I wrote a letter. After about two weeks in snail mail, we used to get our mail in True. the pigeon box at the school. Yeah. I get a letter for an interview to come in. I said, oh my God, I have to take a day off. It's a Monday. So the cut the whole story short. I came to Nairobi, went for this interview. And there's an old, not old I'll say, for he was in his 60s, True. I was in my 20s. Yeah. So looking at him non-stop on the phone, non-stop files on his table, he's on the phone. So the, this interview went on from 9 to about 12, 12, 30. His, oh, divorce wife, yes. his, his divorce wife comes in, then his daughters come in. All this going on, too huh? much All with right. the family in yeah, the yeah. German language. Yes. Nevertheless, after sometimes you can report from tomorrow. Ah. In between, he would give me a file to give a comment. So he gave you the well, job immediately? He gave me the job. He didn't even see my papers. Yes. I said, what is this man, this man? But honestly, I'm telling you, Ian, the two or three places I went for a job, yes. they never looked at my papers. They said, come to me, come to Oh, work. just come to work. So at <laughs> least you've had that particular work. experience. I said, yeah, my papers. Okay, okay. For, 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 so how long did you work there? I worked for them, not, I think, from 87 to about 88, 86 to 88, about two years. 
and after two years was just enough. It was like twenty years. Ah, oh. a very hectic man, not easy. Yeah, and not why easy. did you decide now? Was it called to set up your own business? So you've you're a teacher. You got this particular opportunity. You've worked. So at what not point now did you push? Yes. You're just an employee with a with a mere salary. Yes. You can't start your business with that salary. Uh -huh. And I, by that time, I'm even married. True. Okay. So I said no. I need security. I need a paycheck at the end of the month. Yes. I went into a partnership with two other Indians oh, who were my yes. customers. Yes. So every time I went, they were always uh, having a very high regard for my work for them. Mm -hmm. So they said, we are starting a company. Would you like to join us? Yeah. They said, next week, come on such and such. They will go for lunch. I said, sure. So we went out for lunch and we talked about it. And they said, you run the show. We'll oh, so they, are, they will finance it and then you are to run the, I show. run the show. So that's how much chemicals came to be. Yes. That's how I, I coined the name of the company. I started with them, but you know what, even today, mm -hmm. this is what I want to say to everybody. Yes. Don't get into partnership. Oh, exactly. What, what happened? You want to get into partnership when the law is strong in the country. When mm -hmm. the law is weak, partnerships don't work. All right. Yeah. What in is, short. Yeah. <laughs> Since it was not a if good you experience. Go yeah. your time is very no, I know. The time is very so, quite but short. What yes. I say, yes. You want to be my partner, then take my company. Uh, I give it to you, let me go. Interesting. If I swim, I want to swim alone in the ocean. Yeah. If I want to drown, I'll you drown. drown alone. And magic I don't want to come to you that you are a signatory, sign on this check. Uh, I want to sign the check. By yourself. I want to sign the check. I think life will always learn from the different experiences. But you've managed to run the company for a period even longer than I have been alive for around 32 years. What's been the secret in terms of now, what's it called, being able to sustain this business and grow this business across three different particular continents? What's been the secret to this? In short, I'm a sum total from day one, from age 13, 14, when I started as a hawker in the street, mm -hmm. selling to make a living Yes, with my dad. All that customer psychology, yeah. when to sell, mm -hmm. when to price, how to price, yeah, all yeah. this is a grooming. True. You groom, you groom yourself. Mm -hmm. No business school will teach you this thing. True. They'll give you a very nice fancy degree. Uh, you can go to Ivy Leagues, you can go all the top business schools. But at the end of the day, that business degree will not make you money. True. It is some different game. So it's, it's probably the, gro game. the grooming that you had from when the exactly you are. And, and the best grooming is you have to work in that business. Even if you want to buy a McDonald's today, True. go and work as a manager in McDonald's. Uh, know the ins and outs of McDonald's. Then if you have saved enough from your salary, then buy the McDonald's. Oh, interesting. But don't just say I'm buying McDonald's because I have a million dollars or no, five million but dollars. But you must have experience. You right. must have experience. Experience is very important. Everything experience is important. And to get that experience, even if somebody doesn't pay you, no problem. That's why all corporations have this graduate management training program. True. Or if you want somebody, a key person, then you say you will be my understudy. True. For six months, one year, two years. And it is two to five year process. Oh. You, the incubation period or the period of learning, any business is two to five years. Oh. Don't rush. Then after five, during that period of two to five years, you must set up a goal. You must have an agenda. If you look up to the stars, I always said I look up to the stars, I'll yes. read the moon at least. Yeah. So one day I want to be my own. Very few people have that kind of gene who want to be on their own. Many people are scared to start mm -hmm. on their own. Entrepreneurship is not easy. True. It's very hard. The road can be very lonely. If you're married, it can become, bring problems in your marriage. True. It's very hard to hold it. True. Your relatives, your friends, they all run away from you because they know he doesn't have a paycheck. Doesn't Anytime have money. he can ask us for help, he yes. will ask for money. Not only that, when you try to call them, you will hear a message. Leave a message at the tone. <laughs> they don't reply to call. They know oh. why he's calling. He's in problems. Oh, wow. So leave a message at the tone. It's not easy. But that does not mean that you should not do entrepreneurship. Hmm. Give it a try. Give it a try. But it is hard. It's very lonely. But And if you want to jump into it, first get the experience in that particular line of work or whatever you have, you are doing. Then after it, and then what is very important during those days from day one, whether you are an employee or you are in partnership or you are starting your own venture from day one. Punctuality. You said, Baba, come here at 10 o'clock. True. I was a bit nervous. I yes. said, if this traffic doesn't clear, yes. as a courtesy, as a gentleman, call. I'll call Ian and tell him, Ian, I'm stuck in the traffic. I True. might be late by five minutes. But if I don't call you, yeah. then until 10.30, I show up here. Yeah. So what kind of a businessman he is. True. 
when I have an appointment with a client at 10, it's I'll make sure, even if I reach one hour before, I'll sit in my car, do my work in my car, but five minutes to 10 or five minutes to the appointment time, I'll You're be there. there at the door. I'm it's there. just the discipline that you've inculcated. It is a discipline. And this comes from a school, Don Bosco, mm. a Catholic school. These schools, the missionaries from Ireland, they went all over the world, teaching yes. us discipline, True. punctuality, dressing up, polishing your shoes, everything on time. It's the simple Speak things. It's very important discipline. True. And people judge you from there. True. People make opinions about you. Everything matters. Everything matters. How you portray yourself. This is how you create. Not, I would use the word brand. Everybody's using brand, 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 yeah, yeah. brand. Startup, startup, startup. Entrepreneurship, and the word comes, everybody is true, having true. it on their lips. I don't want to use that. This is, in my business, credibility. Mm. Credibility for time. Credibility for punk. Punctuality. For punctuality. Credibility for money. If I owe you money, I don't have to hide behind True. junior level stuff. He's in a meeting, he's out of the country, True. leave a message, be a man, pick the phone and answer. Sorry, there's a problem. We need another one week, we need another two weeks True. or two months. There'll be a delay. Yeah. But not to worry. If you're nervous, please raise a debit note for interest. Mm. Interesting. And Thank you so much. And some Credibility, yeah. build your credibility. And when you will be on your own, on your feet in entrepreneurship, Everybody will come. Your relatives will also come. Your friends will also come. They all want to help because they say he's a credible Woman. man. Interesting. And you've been in business for all this period, I think. And you've set up your, you have a, what's it called? You have a, what's it called? Part of your company in, running in New York. You have a part of it running in New Delhi. You have a part of it running in Kenya. How exactly are you able to keep a part, uh, what's it called? Just monitor the business across the three different continents. I know. And Very interesting question you've asked me. And a very nice question. Definitely for a person like you, it's baffling. Yeah, because yeah. I've not done it yet. <laughs> it's, it's baffling. Yes. Truly, it's baffling. The kind of business I do, I source worldwide, globally. That's where I was trained. How I was trained? I was a representative of many important manufacturers from Europe. At that time, Eastern Europe, China was not there. This is in the 80s. Our, we were the market for Europe. True. So, and I understudied these people. I worked with them closely. Yeah. Every time I had an opportunity to pick them from the airport, I had an opportunity to, to go and visit a client. We were having time in the car to talk. Yeah. In the evening, when my principal would invite me for a, for a drink, True. I would very heartily accept, because that gives me a time to know more. I'm learning. It is not a classroom. Mm. These things are not taught in classrooms, True. in schools and colleges. Yeah. You learn on the job. True. So, when all this was happening, a question always baffled me. And I was fed up of writing reports. Mm -hmm. I hate to say so, but at a point comes, we, are, we were in a colony in India. We have all, we, until today, we feel discrimination. Mm -hmm. Even in, in the States where I live with my family, my child has gone through that. Yeah. Um, but how do we fight it? We fight it by doing better than them. We say, I'm better than you. Mm -hmm. Every time I want to prove I'm better than you. And that's how we fight it. Mm -hmm. And I said, if he can do this, why can't Go I? Do? All, right. All the time I ask this question, why can't I do it? You can do it. Why can't I do it? So I was on my way to Mexico to visit a company. And I went to the embassy to get my visa. Yeah. They were a bit surprised. What is this man going to look for in Mexico? Yeah. They had zero trade. So it all started from there, that thought. Mm -hmm. By that time I was married. Yeah. I walked into a bank. At that time there was, the bank was called the Chemical Bank. True. So my brother in law was, he's an orthopedic surgeon there. Yeah. He was doing some work. He, said, right. he left me at a guest relation desk and we started chatting with right. that gentleman who was there. So he says, what do you do in Africa? He thought all Africans are like me, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, with, uh, with a black color and a black turban. True, I said, no, I'm an Indian immigrant in Kenya. Kenyans are indigenous Africans, like the African-Americans you have there. Yeah. Th thank you to former President Barack oh, Obama yeah. and our marathon runners in Boston and New York who may put Kenya on the map no, of so At least they got to recognize You it. know how it was in yeah, India? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I went there in 1890, so it all started from there and he gave me some tips. When I picked those tips, I said, okay, let me set up an office here. Interesting. So you actually, from your experiences and the grooming of the companies that you worked for, that's how exactly the dream came to be. That if these people can do it from Europe, why, why not? not I do it? Interesting. And most of the Indians yeah. from here, they have some kind of roots in UK. True. I didn't have any roots in UK. Yeah. So 
I was doing business with a company in US, I was doing business with a company uh, in Mexico. I said, how can I start a company here then? Right. It's so easy. Interesting. You know, yeah. I like that country because they give so much respect to a small business. Mm. A small business in America is $1 million to $10 million. True, true. In that category, it's a small business. Wow. But there's a lot of money here. Yeah, it is. It's a billion. Yeah, it's a big company. Okay, yes. but, but you can't get to those numbers. True. Business doesn't mean you have to do a yeah. million dollar deal or a mm. five million dollar deal. You can do five thousand dollars, three thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. Now the entire Kenyan diaspora is there. They're doing so many kinds of business. True, true. And the institutions are yeah. so strong there. Yeah. When it's I say different. institutions, yeah. the law is so strong. True, true. You can't run away. True. With a credit line. True, true. Interesting. You, the, law, the, yeah. the law is tough. And it's a if different. If you remember when yeah. former President Barack Obama came here and he yeah. addressed the Kenyans and Kasarani, yeah. he says, "Yes, American businesses will come and do business with you, mm -hmm. but they'll ask you tough questions. True. Be ready to answer the, the tough, tough questions. questions." Wow, interesting. So it's <laughs> if it is because time is literally moving so fast. I know you. I, I know we have so much to talk. Yeah, I know there's so, so much to talk. Yeah. Eventually, I ended up yeah. with all that stories yes. and experience incorporating in August '89. Yeah. And I had four months, my yeah. wife was a lecturer in the university yeah. here. I said, Madam, you've got to resign now. Interesting. Yeah, so moving. at least you got to move together. So we have to move together. Wow. The baby was almost yeah. eight, nine months. Yeah. I said, this is the time to do it. Wow. If you'll get a little older yeah. and I get in the comfort zone of yeah. getting a sweet, big, yeah. fat paycheck, uh -huh. I'll never start my own. Wow. Once you get into that comfort zone of getting a big, fat, sweet paycheck, you'll never you, start you will never no, start. It's actually quite true. Yeah, yeah. My goodness. Because I was literally just flown away. And so, I think. 1990, uh, I landed yes. there. Yeah. But it was it was rough. The saying was, yeah. hundred businesses get incorporated there in New York. Yes, ninety nine closed and one is successful. And at Anna, least here's Magic Chemicals is actually quite successful. I was not successful that time. No, I of course, story looking there. back, I have a story yeah. there. I have a story <laughs> there for you. My goodness, I time. got a kick out of New York. You After got two years, I failed. Yeah. I failed completely. All right. But lucky enough, my wife picked up a postdoctoral fellowship, and I said, okay, I don't want to spoil your career. Yes, I failed. You came here because of me. You followed me, but yeah. now. It seems I have to go back to Kenya. True. So to, to get my act together, All right. I called my accountant, I called my attorney, I said, you did a great job. And you know something very important yeah. I'd like to tell you? Yes. How I got incorporated there? Yes. My attorney was so mesmerized when he knew my background and what I do. Because yeah. at that time to go from New York to Boston was like going to a foreign country, yeah. foreign America. True. So he said, how do you know all these people in all these countries and yeah. how do you do all this business? Yeah. Know? He said, okay, I can do something for you. He put my application to INS. Yeah. I have a very special, I hold a green card. Yeah. I'm a legal permanent resident oh, of the United, United States. States yeah. I can even be an American citizen, oh. but uh, it's okay. I, I'm, I'm Kenyan, I yes. want to be Kenyan. Interesting. But that gives me all the rights. That gives me the right to do business. Yeah. That gives me all the right. All right. So I got a kick out of New York, like yeah. any other business, yeah. very difficult. Uh -huh. And I sometimes say that I'm so courageous. I'm such a fighter. I didn't True. do my homework well. Today wow. you today you talk to a businessman, yeah. even my son. Yeah. If you have any business idea, you talk to him. Yeah. He'll ask you three questions and the idea will just, just disappear. It will diffuse. Wow. Because they have said tough questions. Those Americans True. have said tough questions. True. So you've not, I didn't do my homework. I jumped there and I failed. And at so least we learned fine. from it. When I called my accountant, yeah. they said, no. All right. People come here and be a burden on us. Yes. They look for jobs. Yeah. You came here to start a business. And the application he made for me right. was balance of payment deficit. America is importing more and exporting Two. less. Yes. This gentleman is coming us to take the interest of American industry in Africa. Wow. And he'll be buying the product and selling in Africa. Wow. We need people like him. And he's a postgraduate. And that's how it came to be. Within three weeks. Wow. My permit was approved. In two years' time, they gave me a green card. And I'm so happy that I went back in 95 right. after three years because my attorney and my accountant told right. me, go get your act together. We are not closing your company. You don't have to pay us anything. Because okay. all these people oh. are, some of them, they also have history like mine, how right. they came to America. True, so they true. feel they're very nice people. Yeah. They're very nice people. When you, They're genuine people. They want true, to help true. you. And yeah. both of them, well, they didn't charge me anything. I had, I had some oh. dollars to pay them. Nevertheless, oh. That's how it came. In three, that's All how right. it started. I came back. All right. My local company, it was dormant. I brought it up. Wow. I started from an apartment. All right. For many years, until 1983, uh, All right. not 83, 90, 2003 or yeah. 2004, yeah. when I moved to where I am. Yeah. Wow. Otherwise, I moved. And you know, it was very interesting. I would like to tell wow. you, and for many to listen. When I would go to visit a customer with a briefcase or yeah. a style, yeah. a business attire in Kenya, 
When I gave my business card, I didn't have a physical address on it. And they would ask me, Mr. Baba, where is your office? They didn't know it. I said, hesitatingly, I would tell them, you know, I work from an apartment. Oh, oh so you're a briefcase company. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you're a briefcase company. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's quite an interesting story. And I know just time so, is literally just on our side. I think I know, time so was so literally... That is how yes. it all came about. My goodness. Then I went back in. Then yeah. have to give a jump start. Yeah. It came up and slowly yeah. by slowly, it's, step by step, step wow. by step. That's where we are today. Oh, true. <laughs> I think because of time, we just have to cut it short. But we, we thank should, you so yes. much for having watched the show. I know there's so much to talk about. I think we'll do another part too, Mr. Mr. Bauer. I think you can't compre or rather compress a history of around 50 years. But as you end the show, I'd like to let you very, know. Very, very difficult for very me. Difficult. I'm a detailed person. I'm a detailed person. I know. Person. <laughs> I do, if I don't we'll give you detail hotpot, you will true. not like it. <laughs> but thanks so much for having watched the show. I think there's so much. I think we'll plan to do another part too. But I only like to let you know we are the Capital Club, the place you need to be as an entrepreneur. My name is Ian Dennis, and this has been The Late Night Business. Until next time, I'll see you right here. Thanks so much.